gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Third Eye Champagne. We have a special guest today and her name is Linda G, the Comanche Psychic. This is Linda Grindle and we've been friends for fucking ever now. Yeah. Forever. Try I told her she was psycho, I mean psychic. <laughs> she, she told me I was both and she was right. <laughs> So we're talking to Linda today. She, I decided I want to talk to some psychics, specifically female psychics, for my November show. Okay. So um, why would I not interview one of the best psychics I've ever met in my life who's Thank also you. my friend? Thank I, you. Of course I would interview her. So we are, we're going to get all the nitty gritty details about Miss Linda G. So okay, so let's talk about it. You're a kid. Are you psychic as a kid? Like, are you are you prophesizing as a child, or did well, it come I later? Well, I could. I wasn't seeing dead people, but I was seeing higher forms. Like, I could always feel angelic forms. Even as a, even as a little one. Yeah, like even in, in elementary school, I remember seeing them sitting like they were observing me. Well. I could have been psychotic. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think we would know by now, yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was eight years old, I had a visitor, and it, it was Christ. I know it was. Yeah. Because it was multi-technicolor. I could even feel the wind hitting my face. Okay, so set the scene. Where are you? I'm in my room. You th I thought I was asleep, but I was um, transferred over, and he, he was standing there. I went up to a big, huge cross that was on this grassy hill. But I could hear that humming noise. You know, they say when you're in a higher vibration. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. almost sounds like angels in one tone. Yeah. And I went up to the cross and I knew I should look. There was a Bible, but there was no words on it. Oh, that's cool. And I looked up and he was standing there in all his glory. And he looked at me and he said, my child. Oh my God. And I was so scared. I looked down and something said to me, you better listen to what he's saying. Like it's, it would it's be important. wise for right. you to listen. Right. But I was just a kid. I was right. scared to death. Right. Plus my parents were atheists. Right. That's right. I forgot right. about so that. So I'm like, I think this is probably Christ. So I looked up again and he was really smiling at me <laughs> and the love that I could feel. And I'm looking at him and I think he said, I love you. And I literally like transferred back into my body and I was like illuminated i was ice plus i was ice cold it's like i transferred uh, out yeah yeah like this yeah not right after yeah. that i got hit by a car oh my lord so i'm wondering you know what i'm right, saying right if there's something to right. that wow but it was omnipresent it was absolutely and i told my mom mom i think a man that's called jesus or christ was here what he he talked to me she, and you know she was atheist but right. she was raised catholic right she was said, Irish, right? She was Irish. No, she was Comanche Indian. No, she Indian. was Comanche Indian. Your dad was the Irish. Oh, my dad, when my grandma died, came home. His eyes were beat red from crying. He says, your grandma's dead. I don't want to see any tears. That's it. She's dead. It's over. That's very Irish. <laughs> and then when he was, he said to my mom, yeah, when I die, have me cremate it, put me in a coffee pan, a can and put me in the garbage. <laughs> Cheaper that way. When I got hit by that car, my foot was under my knee. Oh. I had a, a complete compound fracture, oh. right? So the bones are sticking out. Yeah. I'm down the street. My mom was so upset. So that they, they, she called my dad and said, Linda's been hit by a car, you know. And he didn't want to pay for the ambulance. He said, leave her there. He was a fireman. <laughs> leave her there. I'll come home. I'll get the, I'll get the uh, we used to have station wagons. Right. I'll get the station wagon. I'll put her in the back of the station wagon. Oh, my God. And, the, and mom's telling the guy that's standing there, he said, ma'am, she's too serious to wait for a station wagon. So I'm laying on the ground. Everybody's crowded around. Right. I could look up a little bit. They wouldn't let me put my head all yeah, the way yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see my shoe. I got hit hit on the top of a hill. And knocked I was out of your shoes. Midway, I was down here, and then I could see my shoe and my little briefcase oh, side yeah. by side oh, on the bottom of the hill. Oh, man. So, um, uh, but the, I'm laying there sobbing. My mother comes. We had been in trouble like the day before, 
and mom had threatened no Christmas presents. Oh, wow. So, my mom's like this because she, she didn't want to hear the screaming. Right. And everybody's gathered around. And then somebody's coming with a big camera taking pictures. Will the police do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They no, take yeah, pictures. Yeah, of course. Of so course. I'm thinking it must be the press. <laughs> <laughs> so in my tears, I'm trying to smile for the camera. Big, I had big old ass freckles, oh, big old ass teeth. Oh, God, that's great. I'm trying to trying smile to for smile. the camera because I thought for sure <laughs> I'm going to be on the front page of the Daily Review. So my mom's all like this, and I look up at my mother and I said, Mom, are we still not going to get any Christmas presents? And oh. everybody's head snapped. Oh. What a horrible <laughs> mother. Uh, Somebody take this child away. Can you believe it? No Christmas oh, presents. That's great. Oh, wow. Yeah, so oh, that my was. Goodness. So, so that's when I saw, I saw the Christ energy, and then I could always feel right. a beautiful presence. And I used to, you know, my dad was atheist, but he was cool. You want to go with your Mormon friend up right. to the temple right. for the dances? You want right. to go to the Presbyterian? People will be really upset, but I used to go with our Italian friends, very Italian, down to the All Saints Catholic Church. Oh, yeah. And I'd stand in line with them and take Holy Communion. I mean, I, w I was hungry. I wanted the bread. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? So I would, I would end up knowing more in Bible studies, especially right. for the youth, than right. they did. Wow. But I remember thinking, wait a second, wait a second. This God you guys are talking about is not the man I saw. Right. That energy was not, thou shalt, you, right. you're no good, you better right. amend for your sins. Yep. No, that's not the Christ I know. It was all encompassing, all healing. It was beautiful. Yeah. So when you told your mom, you're like, hey, so I think I was hanging out with Jesus. What did she say? She just was kind of, I could tell she was curious. Mom would tell us stories like she used to see ghosts. Oh. She used to see, and we'll get into that later. But mom would see energy forms wow. come in and out of our house and stuff. Wow. I didn't see it. She saw she it. She saw it. But she told me that, um, yeah, there was somebody named Jesus Christ, which made me curious. So right. my Catholic girlfriend, Portuguese, across the street, the Brito family, I used to go over there, and she, they had Bibles and stuff, and I asked to look at it, and uh, the daughter told me the stories of Jesus. Right. Was, I, that's when I got really in love with Christ. It was like... <laughs> He was my my boyfriend, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but yeah, not yeah. in a sexual way. Right, it yeah, was yeah, like, no, I, know what you mean. I love him like right. you did Davy Jones of the Monkey. Right, right. Jesus I was just, Christ Superstar, oh, yeah. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. So years later, I would actually still see him, kind of. Like when I was 33, he came again to me. Not sense. as omnipresent as that. Right. That's but he when, told me he again. he died when he was 33. Yeah, yeah, he came to me when, he, when I was 33. Oh, wow. And he told me he loved me then, too. Wow. Like, oh Christ, you're the only one that loves me. <gasps> so anyway, um, so I would visualize him. And I would always visualize at a stream sitting with him, talking. Wow. And he used to tell me, listen, you have something really important to do. But I always thought I'd be Hollywood. I always wanted to be an actress. My uncle lived in New York. Oh, he sent me right. books on Stanislavski Method. Right. I thought I'd be a famous Academy Award winning actress. So did I. <laughs> This is like, this is becoming Linda Gree, Gree? Linda Gree. Linda Gree. Linda, Linda G. Lore, which is your mom took you to the medicine man. Oh, when I was born, mom was with the tribe in Oklahoma, which I just got back from. Fantastic. But there's a real sadness with the Indians, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. oh, my, don't, I can't say Indians. My cousins get mad. It's not Indians. It's Native Americans. Right. Okay, thank you. Right. So, um, everybody on my my mom's brother's side that lived in Oklahoma, they all suffered from real emotional issues, alcoholism. You know how that runs yeah. in the family. Oh, yeah. So, but oh my God, it's it's breathtaking. It's absolutely, they all are going back to the native ways. Yeah. The, the language too, and I'm getting the tapes to learn to That's speak Comanche. My grandmother cool. who died of childbirth in a white run because she always, my mother used to remind me. It was a Indian hospital called the Lawton Indian Hospital. Uh -huh. But she died in childbirth, so we think she had toxemia. Uh, with right. a child in utero. Right. And um, uh, 
my mom always said that she, she apparently when she died my mom said that this woman was actually uneducated but she could speak English Mexican and Comanche Wow that's impressive yeah that's very impressive so anyway so your mom takes you as an infant. She takes me as an infant to the tribe, and the medicine man was there. Back then they had more traditional. They do now, but you know, I slide him a few books and no, <laughs> the peyote man, right? And he looked at me, and he he did. He was interesting. He does the sign of the cross on my head, which is a Western thing. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's Catholic, Western. right? Exactly. So exactly. you know, it's interesting. But he told my mother that I had the third eye and he was protecting himself from giving me any kind of energy. Really? Like he didn't want to. He didn't want to. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's interesting. So that, wow. yeah. So fast forward. But she was like, she tells me the story one day drinking the cocktails, cooking spaghetti. <gasps> I'm like, what mom, what? Wait, yeah, what? Like, yeah, he said you had the third eye, like whatever. Yeah. Well, it has to be, like, for her, she's seeing energy forms and stuff, so it was probably very, like, yeah, whatever, she, you she have She was it. afraid of it. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to, if, I, if I've got the history correct, you don't really do a lot of psychic stuff for a while. Yeah. And then you're living in Southern California. Yeah, Laguna Beach. And you start reading cards. Yeah. Just, Just because uh, my hairdresser was one of the card readers in the Laguna, and he said, you know what? You're more psychic than me. Take these cards and play with so them. So was he reading for you? Yeah. He's doing your hair and reading yeah. cards. And he said, you know what? You need to take these cards. You're really good. And I wasn't even, I didn't predict nothing. Right. I'm just getting my hair done. Right. And you, so you take the cards and you start. And so I started playing. Right. Just playing right. and reading for right. people. Right. And then I was getting right. You know? Yeah. People would say, gosh, darn Linda, you're correct. But at this and then, point, you're not. You're not speaking to dead people. You're not. No. But you can still see here and there. There's energy forms, whatever. But yeah, you're but not doing. Yeah. But if you told me thing. there was nobody knocking it on my bed, shaking right. my bed, wake. I never went there. Right. Never. Right. Okay. So you're reading cards. You're making predictions. You're getting really good. Right. But it wasn't your full time job. No. No. But when I came up back up here to yeah. Northern California, I went to nursing school. And I lived with my parents because my parents helped because I had my daughter with me. And um, next thing you know, I'm reading for very famous San Francisco people. Right. Word of mouth, it got right. that hot. Right. My dad, I used to lay these wads of cash on the table wow. coming home at night yeah. and then go to bed. And dad would say, Jesus Christ, this woman can't get her life together. But everybody else in their neighbor wants her right. opinion because, right. you know, my dad didn't believe this Right. It's not that you're psychic. It's you're giving good advice. So... Um, then I got real like overwhelmed and I didn't know how to say no I didn't know how to do those boundaries and I was being you know and then there was a lot of people that offering me the Sun and moon the stars if you just give me a reading and you know at the time I could have used the money right but when you do that sometimes it affects your ability because oh, yeah. then you're beholding to them. Yeah, well, and then there's so much pressure. They're paying me so much money, so I have to give them a really good reading. And right. And you're like, yeah, I feel it. And I used to drink, too. Not, I was an alcoholic, but I enjoyed my cocktails. Right. And I had fun reading. Right. I was actually pretty good when I, when I had cocktails. I just can't really drink anymore. But I'm pretty good when I have a cocktail. Yeah, too. I don't like, know what that just, is. Just, they say yeah. don't do it. I don't know why they say that. I Personally, I've never had any... I know Problems you can't issues. smoke crack and do it. You cannot. And I we've tried. Can't. We've both tried. We're just kidding, <laughs> no, you guys. No, no. Don't no, run. No. My son is so straight. Both my boys, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't like it. Right. And I'll say, hey, son, what are you doing? Oh, smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> Reading, and I was in nursing school, and it put me through nursing school. It wow. gave me everything extra I needed. Right. And, um, and how old are you about? Like, you're what? I was like 28, yeah. 29. Yeah, okay. And then um, once I graduated and started working, because in those days they used to grab you off the street. There was no trying. Right. Now I'm reading women with masters. I didn't have a master. Right, right. I'm reading women with masters that can't get a geriatric job. Yeah. So I start reading and, and, and I mean, and then I start working and then I was done with it. I had things happen as a nurse though where that was pretty profound that I'm putting in my book. But I'm going to tell you, the nursing experience I do not regret. 
It, it, even though I did, I never, because I could make, I made good money. Oh, yeah. You, if you needed cash in those days, you just grab an extra shift. Yeah. They used to have me come in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We would do what they call 16-hour shifts. And I'd leave 7.30 in the morning. I was young then. Right, you could way, do it then. Yeah. I was way thinner, too. You could do it then. Girl, I used to work in ER with all the new recruits all the coming hot, in. The hot boys. All the yeah. highway <laughs> patrol. All the good look. And back in them days, honey, my dance card was full. <laughs> I love so it. I it love was it. a little bit it. of a social thing, too. I love it. I love but, it. yeah, so... Um, you know, I was out of the mix and I think I even tried to read. I think while I was reading when I was in nursing school, cause I got a little big headed, I thought I was really great. Right. And I had a lot of famous people coming at me. Right. Right. That I kind of thought I was better, you know, and, and they kind of took away my abilities I because when that. my abilities came back a thousand fold with breast cancer, right. they told me at that time, if your ego gets in the way, we're pulling it. That's exactly what they said. I said, whoa, okay. So I gotta be right, careful. Right, right, You have a... But now I'm old and fat, so who cares? You're, you know? you're, but you're gorgeous. Oh, now. thank you, thank you. She's Keep talking. Looking, she's a good looking broad. So, okay. So, so all right, so nursing school, you stop reading cards. Stop reading. You're totally not, you don't even touch them. Do You don't read for yourself, nothing. No. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Although, so, although, check this out. My sister was getting married to her husband. When I read the cards for her, which you should never do. Yeah, no shit. I, I think I had a couple of lessons. All right. And I said, enjoy your life with Bob. Because in 25 years, when he turns 50, I said, not 25 years, something major is going to occur. And she said, is he going to leave me? Oh. I said, I can't tell you, Deb, but it was the death it card. It was the death card, yeah. And I said, just enjoy your life. Don't know. They told me when he turns 50. So, because that's not in the cards. So, and then every once in a while she'd hit me up. Is, does he have a girlfriend? Is he going to leave? He was a big mucky muck attorney. I know. know. I remember that. Yeah. And then um, he turns 50, diagnosed with Alzheimer's. He's dead by 56. So when he turned 50, exactly what I predicted came true. Ooh. Uh-huh. Ooh. But I usually can't read from my own family. Really? Yeah. Wow. I can have prophetic dreams. Right. But... I have, I've had a few of those mm -hmm. myself for the family. Mm -hmm. um, so when do you pick up the cards again? Um, I retired because of injuries out right. of Alameda County because right. I worked my ass off. Um, so that's probably 2000... Three, I played around, um, so would read you're, you're, people, but I'm just playing. Right. I'm not getting any money for right. it. Right. You're just, you know. I got girlfriends, hey. And, we would sit around, right. and I, I would throw the cards. Yeah. People loved it, but then you get kind of tired of being only being invited because you read the cards. Exactly. That's a real thing. I rest my case. That's a real thing. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, because I, I did the same thing. Oh, bring your cards. We'll have, a, we'll have some glasses of champagne, and mm -hmm. then you're reading everybody's cards, and then you're exhausted. Right. And then you realize, like, I just worked. Everybody else had a party. I know. And I worked. Right. Yeah, it's awful. I know. In fact, somebody invited me not too long ago to something, and, and I've known this person for quite some, and then right at the last minute, they're saying, oh, do me a favor, bring your cards, and it's like, I didn't even go. No, 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 no. It just gets, it's like, they and people, a lot of people don't understand it's a job, it and it really takes a lot out of you. It really affects me, girlfriend. Yeah, me too. I get exhausted. When, so you're playing around with the cards, and then, because I know once you got breast cancer, that's when it came a thousand. It was like, bam. Well, remember I, 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 uh, no, actually, I started at Angel Heart. Oh. Post, I met Sandy, who oh, worked yeah, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, you know, I told her I had done some reading. Well, come on down and interview with Carol and yeah, those yeah, guys and yeah. see. I said, okay. You know, it seemed like something to do. Yeah. I wasn't doing anything. Right. So I, would, I went out there and talked to Carol and this other gal, Peg. And I read their card. They said, yeah, you're pretty good. Let's give it a try. And uh, next thing you know, I'm booking. Right. You're, you know? And you're back to reading professionally. But still no mediumship. No. But then one day I'm walking my dog. Because I think I only went to Angel once right. a week or something. Right. I'm walking the dog down the path. I've told this story a million times. But I'm praying for my life. I'm saying, please, God, don't let me die. Right. Because it was a it was a stage three cancer, and Jesus. they were saying, you know, it's not good. 
And I, I said, you know, my boys were still young. Yeah. I said, please, I, I, and I have a, a child that has issues. He's not really special needs. He's kind of a genius. He just doesn't like to talk to people. Right. And um, I said, please, you know, I still need to take care of my children. And, and my parents were both getting pretty sick. And I knew I was the only nurse in the family, you know. Jeez. So anyway, something, I thought Godzilla was coming through the trees. It wasn't a windy day. But I could see the top of the trees move, and I heard this rumbling. So I thought it was the uh, the rangers coming through, right? Because it was that kind of path. Right, right, right. So I moved the dog. I started to move the dog to the side, I get out of the way. I never heard the story. Oh, you didn't? No, I talk I never about heard it. This. This is great. I moved the dog over, thinking that will let the truck go through. Yeah. And then this powerful wind force came down from the trees. Mm. The dog sat, which Moochie was like, "Come on!" Well, I know. On, I mom. remember. Moochie sat. And I got hit, and I heard as clear as day, thy will be done. It was a man's voice. There's a man that talks to me, and he's powerful, girlfriend. Right, right. And I felt like someone gave me about 10 shots of epinephrine. Oh, I was buzzed. Right. I couldn't get the smell of the earth off my hands. You wow. know, that fresh yeah, yeah, smell. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. From, delicious, from, yeah. I couldn't get that smell off. Wow. And that lasted for two. I couldn't eat, so I thought I was dying. <laughs> Um, and I was like buzzed, buzzed. And then when that happened, I go back to Angel Heart. I'm sitting with this client. I'm reading her. And that's when that famous motorcycle guy came that's through. That's right, motorcycle guy. He yes. walked through the, through the wall. He was tall. He was good looking, crystal blue eyes, a beard, motorcycle boots. And he proceeded to tell me exactly how this, how he died. And I'm just talking. I'm just like, Whoa. right, and she's like wailing, and I can't look at her because I'd start crying. And he's telling me everything about his girlfriend because he wasn't married. I didn't know that. Right. He had two kids, where he died, how he died, everything. And then he looked at me and he said, would you tell her I'm more alive now than when I had a body? Please stop mourning me so hard. Wow. And I turn around and it was like I felt bad for her because he was kind of bawling her out right you know? right but he's like stop it right I'm fine it off. yeah 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 that's real so that wasn't bad I thought well that's not too bad right now I went out and told Carol oh my god you won't believe what happened and then after that boom boom it was just the door was open the shingle was out and every dead person from here to Timbuktu but they don't bother me right that's unless you're working thing. <clears throat> I was on a flight um I remember on first class, of yes, course. Of course. Um, and a very southern stewardess w walked by me and asked me if there was anything she could do. And a man stood right next to me and he said, I'm her father, can you please? I'm like, no, please. Right. Yeah. No, please. I know. He said, Linda, please tell her that everything's going to be okay with her sister. Everything's going to be okay. So I just bit the bullet. I said, right. look, your dad's, I'm a psychic medium. Your dad's here. He wants me to tell you not to worry. Everything's going to be okay with your sister. And then I said, there you go. And I looked down. And she said, Linda? And I said, yes. She said, you see this scarf on my neck? I said, yes. She said, that was my daddy's scarf. Wow. She said, and yes, we're very worried about my sister. I will tell my mother. She will be so happy to hear about see? it. But the cool thing is, she didn't come back and say, oh, tell me more. No, she didn't do she any of that. she just was like, thank you so much, and I'm on my way. She was on her way. Well, and I see, you and I are the same way. We're like, I'm not going to go to a stranger and say, no, I just got a hit on you and blah, blah. I know, fuck no, absolutely not. Damn it, I'm trying not to swear. I'll cut that out. <laughs> just, spoiler alert, Linda was cured of cancer. She is in mm -hmm. full remission, um, and you just kept going. I right? kept going. You kept yeah. going. So tell me about your YouTube channel. How did you get there? Well, I didn't want to do it. I know. You said I was with her, and, <laughs> and she's like, I, it was exhausting. And uh, she said, oh, you know, you should try it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hell no. <coughs> hell to the no. <laughs> and um, then they talked to me. And said, do it. <coughs> Excuse me. And they said, yeah, um, Linda, you need to calm people down. That's exactly the words they said. Yeah. I said, okay, I'll give it a whirl. I thought I'd get a hundred if that. Probably my old Facebook friends and stuff. And that just no, you went blew through the up. roof. You blew up. You're still blowing up right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost 12,000 yeah, now. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, it's 
And it, it helps when it comes true too. Well, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It, that that shows that you're credible. Is there anything else I want to ask you? Is there any, anything you want to say about yourself or about being psychic? Well, I'm five foot seven, 110 <laughs> pounds. She's single. No, I don't shoot. <laughs> I put on my I put on my Twitter not single. Yeah, I saw that. Because you I didn't creepers. Oh, hello. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we're gonna wrap this sucker up. That is our background on Miss Linda G and how she she became who she is today. Thank you. And I, yeah, I just and I'm writing say, a book, you guys. I will get that sucker done. I got like three editors want to help me with it. Jesus, good. I know. That's great. I know. Um, I think Linda's amazing. I think she's brilliant. And the thing with Linda is. You're not just getting a psychic, you know, you don't just get, this is what's really brilliant about you is you, you do have that touch of Hollywood. You have it. You know I what do. I mean? You have it. You have that like, <laughs> you know, you're just kind of, you're sparkly, you sparkle. I remember my husband when he first saw one of her old, old, old videos. I don't even know if they're still up online, but this was like ages ago. Like years when ago. When I first started or? When, no, when, um, when Tana, I was doing Tana comedy. Did a, yeah, Tana did like a little... Video oh, that one. Down Angel yeah. Heart. My husband saw the video and he goes, "Oh, honey, she's a star." <laughs> so that's what I love about Linda. If, oh, if we were and your it, husband doesn't give compliments. Not really. Not oh like my that. god, no, I yeah, love no, it. Was it. real. Yeah, no. So like that. That is my. Um, that is my. I love Linda story. Basically, is I think what makes her so unique is that you don't just get this flat psychic reading right she really cares about you when you're sitting in front of her um it's sort of like you go in and i go like yeah. this and then yeah. i pull out who you are if you guys want to find linda um she hasn't been shadow banned on youtube like i have so i know and i'm gonna put this online too <laughs> so if you're watching this on her channel then you've already found her yeah. but she's linda g the comanche psychic you're just gonna leave that running huh <laughs> we got a weed whacker out here folks uh, Linda G. The Comanche Psychic on YouTube. You can find her at www.lindagrindle.com. Um, if you want to book a reading, she's probably booked all through the rest of the year. Through February. Yeah. Of next so year. book now. Book I might now. open up some more little times. Yeah. Here and Get there. In there. So. Get in So thank you so Namaste. much. Special thanks to Jacinta Higgins, our main sponsor for this program. Mm -hmm.